All right, guys, this is Randall Rawhide Wurst. This is video for Nutrient Survival Foods. This is prepping your land for your wild animals. Right here I have the tools that I use to clear the game trail so that I can walk on them, be more quiet, and I don't get hit in the face, especially at night. So these pair of clippers work in real handy. You can cut a lot of stuff with it rather than do a lot of extra work with your muscles. A handsaw. One of the important things about that is that it's curved and it's got a hand grip so I can use more power in it. I don't need anything really big. If I did, then I'd have to get a chainsaw out. This is machete, a small one. It's made in the United States. It's called L Machete. All right, this is outstanding. The tip here was broken. I had to refile that back down. That cut through a piece of cable and the cable lock that goes on it when I was cutting a piece of wood. This is really tough, good steel. Excellent tool. Clippers, hand clippers for snipping stuff off, okay? On my pouch where I have my knife is kept is a little survival pouch on there. Now all these things can rust and they all need to be sharpened. So I use silicone spray to spray them down then I take steel wool and then I wipe it down with that and keep them nice and clean. Now to keep them sharp, I sharpen with this called Speedy Sharp. I sharpen this tool, this tool, and this tool with it. And you can also do knives, but especially for bigger stuff, and I can also do axes with it. It's an outstanding tool that you can use to sharpen your instruments with, all right? Don't forget this. The next, I will always have my gloves with me. You've got to have leather gloves to protect your hands. All right, these are the tools I use to clear the stuff with. What I'm gonna go through now is show you how I feed some of the animals, how I put some of the cover in for them, make cover for them actually. And then I'm gonna show you some piles of um, mulch that I've done for 15 years so you can see well, if I have to do gardening, I can use that with the soil and I have great soil for growing stuff with. And all it is is my clippings from my lawns and the clippings and the mulching from the leaves that fall every year. All right, guys, we'll get going on the other stuff right now. All right, I want to show you this real quick. This is for feeding basically woodpeckers. This is the paste. Only thing I really wanted to show you on it is my neighbor has these and they have a different system where they lock up and the squirrels always get their paste out. This has a really tough hook system. You can see that right here. It's tough to get it on it, but once you get it hooked in there, the squirrels can't get it out. If you use the other kind that has these clips on it, the squirrels will get your stuff out and my dog will be finding it and picking it up. Now we're gonna go over to this bird feeder over here. What I wanted to show you on this is, this is to keep the squirrels from getting up and getting into the feeder. But one of the most important things of 15 years of living here is I've always got my food got wet. I finally found this one that's got a cover on it right here so the food, the rain can't touch the food in the inside. The birds can still get it, but it'll keep it dry. Extremely important because it molds and gets a, a fungus and then you gotta go and clean all that out. Excellent, I got this at Rural King, okay? We're gonna move on over here to this other one real quick. I do this for the squirrels, and in the base of my trees, I take handfuls of sunflower seeds for the squirrels. Other, other animals will eat it also, but basically it's for the squirrels, and this is for the squirrels here. Now, next one I'm gonna go to is mulching, and I'll show it to you in a minute, and it's excellent for mixing with soil and having good soil for growing crops in. So come on over here. Now, I know this looks like a mess, but what this is is all these years of her me putting her plants when they're died and I stack here. This is excellent soil, great stuff for gardening. So I keep it here. So when I got to use it, I use above ground uh, gardening tins, those big long ones that are made of aluminum, excuse me, not tin, they're aluminum. And that's what I put my garden stuff in. Now I want to show you real quick. Most people, when they're feeding the deer, they take, this is a, open pan, water goes off of it, but they always turn their buckets the other way. The problem is then it gets wet and gets moldy. Flip them upside down like I've done here. Got one over there, it's flipped upside down. 
the food doesn't get moldy. They'll eat it even if it rains, the rain will come off of it and it doesn't turn moldy on them. You don't want that. It'll get a black mold on it. Not good for them. The other thing all deer need, they need salt. Don't forget your salt lick. All right? So you got to have a salt lick. Now, I don't know if you can see from here, but that's one pile of brush. That's another pile of brush down here. All right? And down there, I've got another pile of brush down there for them. What I've done is I live next to the boondocks, so you may not have that opportunity. But what I've done is made cover and concealment for animals so they can breed and have like rabbits. I love rabbits. So mostly the rabbits stay in this stuff here. Now, when I've got these deer trails here, there's five of them that go across here. You can't see them all. But with those tools, when I want to walk those deer trails, this is where I use those tools to clear the stuff out. Now periodically I go around and I'll pick up the stuff on the bottom and get it up out of the way so I'm not stepping on it, breaking it, making a noise. I actually haven't hunted anything here, but the opportunity is here for me, so I take care of the animals. I don't know in this neighborhood how many animals will be left if things turn bad, but I've prepped myself for as small things as birds and squirrels and rabbits. Deer, I don't know so much how much what will be left but I still prep for them, I still take care of them. I don't hunt them, I don't do anything to them at this time, all right? This is just prepping your land, getting it ready to take care of animals, and that's what you need to do. I'm gonna show you one more mulch pile, it's 15 years old, of grass and leaves that I've mulched up. I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'll walk down here and show you the size of it. That's excellent for your gardening too. Save that stuff. All right, we'll come down here, guys. All right, guys, if Nick can get a picture of this, you can see the size of it. This is grass, and this is leaves falling from the trees that I've mulched up 15 years. Look at the size of this. This is excellent for gardening. Don't forget, you got to cut your lawn. you got to pick up your leaves off your lawn. Put it in a pile. Make a mulch pile. When you got to garden and grow your own stuff, you've got great stuff to mix in with your soil and be able to grow good crops with it. All right, guys wagon I, for your home use this one uh, dumps itself it's heavy but if you needed a wagon and you were going to take off in with your rucksack and you needed to carry more stuff with you you'd want a lighter wagon than this but what i really want to show you today is i use a water knot don't have time to show you what it is but it's a water knot you can look them up what i've made is a small harness for me so i can just put it over my shoulder like this now when I'm carrying this, if I, I don't like to stretch myself out, instead of my hand pulling it, it's pulling against my shoulder and I keep my hand on it to guide it. Now I've done the work with my body pulling the wagon, not wearing out my hands, all right? Now I'm gonna show you the wheelbarrow. Now I would do the same thing. I'd take water knots and tie on the handles. But the, one of the most important things I wanna show you about the wheelbarrow, hold on just a second. you get a picture of that? What I want you to see is the two wheels, okay? Now they make uh, steel bars that are threaded, and that's what I did. I took steel bars and threaded so I could take the wheel from the center, buy a second one, and put them on the outside. Now it's far more stable. So when you're using it, and you hook up your harness to it, even if I don't have harness because you're gonna pull the wheelbarrow, it's stable, okay? You're not gonna be able to go and do what you wanna do with one wheel, you need two wheels. Now, a lot of people have generators for your house, okay? There's two things I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you an extra muffler to make it quiet so you're not telegraphing that you have a generator for making electricity for your house. Then I'm going to show you how you electrically hook it up to your house. There's a box you got to pay to have inserted into your fuse box. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to get the muffler out here in just a second and show you so it, what it does is deaden the sound of my generator so it's not making a lot of noise. All right, I'll be right back. This is a standard muffler that came on my gas uh, generator. This is an additional one I built to deaden the sound of it becomes very important. A neighbor friend of mine 
the work for the electrical company he had when the electricity was out for a little bit more than a week. He had had his generator on, had electricity, and the neighbors came by to complain why he had electricity, and they didn't. Okay, and he said, if you just be quiet a minute, you can hear my generator going. But the point is, if you've got it going quiet, people don't know where it is and that you have a generator. It's important to do that because if you have to use it in emergency situations, you don't want other people to know what you have and what you're using. So I've built this system to quiet that muffler down. You'd have to be really close to hear it. Now the next thing I'm going to show you, it doesn't matter if you have a generator, uh, solar powered or gas operated, you have to have a system that hooks into your electrical system to your fuse box. That I paid to have done. The next thing you'll see is what that looks like. All right guys, you have your generator. It doesn't matter what kind that you have. The problem is most people don't do what I've done here. This is a system that's tied into my fuse box. You can see it coming in here. The electricity goes out. Flip your main breaker switches. Turn your generator on. Then flip all your switches on. Now this is tuned into my house. It'll run my, all my stoves or, and my uh, refrigerators and it'll do my main electric electricity stuff. I can switch to, if I start running out of power, I've got too much and drawing too much, I can flip a couple of these off and just have it go to certain things. But without this, you can only run a couple things at one time and it doesn't work well. This system is what you need. If you're gonna have a generator, you've got to have this system so you can hook up and run power straight into your fuse box into your house. All right, guys, I'll catch you back outside. All right, guys, I've gone over prepping for animals such as deer, squirrels, rabbits. I showed you the cover. I showed you how you feed them, different techniques for that. I also went into stuff for your gardening your mulching stuff that I have that it can be used for making good soil. I also went over stuff for your house. You have your generator. I showed you what the uh, muffler looks like to s help silence your generator. And I showed you inside the conversion that you need to transfer your power from your generator into your electrical system into your house. Now that's about the best that I can do for you on this stuff. What you have to remember I tell you every time, it's how Randy looks at stuff. Think about what you have, adapt stuff to fit your needs, improve on stuff. You've got a brain, use that sucker. It doesn't mean I've thought of everything. You guys watching these videos can take it from there and work on stuff that you need to done, or excuse me, get done. All right guys, see you on the ground.